Hi, you fam. Welcome back. Hope you guys are having a great day. I'm Joe. I'm Dan. We're back with another reaction. It's movie time here, and we got a classic one for you. Which one is it, Dan? We're going with the courtroom drama 12 Angry Men. Yeah, we are. This ought to be interesting. It should be. I'm not opposed to a good classic, so... Mm. Hopefully you aren't either, fam. Let's go check it out together. Cheers to you, fam. Enjoy. You've listened to a long and complex case, murder in the first degree. It's now your duty to sit down and try and separate the facts from the fancy. If there's a reasonable doubt in your minds as to the guilt of the accused, then you must bring me a verdict of not guilty. Hey, look, that's Lee Cobb. Yeah, from uh, from The Exorcist, the, the detective. Okay. Yeah. I see it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the event that you find the accused guilty, the death sentence is mandatory in this case. Jeez. He's a young man. He's really young. Looks scared as hell. Mm hmm. Facing he's like he's death. in shock. And facing a death sentence, that's, yeah. It's gonna be a weird situation, right? Knowing your life is in the hands of all these guys and you don't know them. Yeah. Nice and steamy in there. Turn on that fan. You got the right idea. Yep. Oh, no, it don't work. No. <laughs> now I know why they're mad. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody give me some air. How'd you like it? Oh, I don't know. It was pretty interesting. If you ask me, I'd slap those tough kids down before they start any trouble. There was a lot of time and money. Oh, well, so much for the Bill of Rights and whatnot. <laughs> yeah, he's not interested in impartiality, is he? <laughs> no. I was only wondering how the market closed. You got a seat on the exchange? I'm a broker. Nobody wants to talk about the case. <laughs> I happen to have tickets to that ball game tonight. Something tells me you're not going to make it. Yeah. I think it's customary to take a preliminary vote. Who knows? Maybe we can all get out of here, huh? Uh-huh. Well, let's not be too hasty. <laughs> yeah. Man's life is on the line here. Yeah. Just remember that this has to be 12 to nothing either way. That's the law. Unanimous. Yep. Now, all those voting guilty, please raise your hands. One holdout. Clearly has a lot on his mind compared to everybody else. Boy, oh boy, there's always one. You really think he's innocent? I don't know. So how come you vote not guilty? Because it's important to talk about it. We're talking about somebody's life here. We can't decide it in five minutes, supposing we're wrong. So what's the difference how long it takes? Let's take an hour. Ball game doesn't start till 8 o'clock. Yeah, you got time, pal. Chill out. Yeah, this is important stuff. He's been hit on the head by somebody once a day, every day. He's had a pretty miserable 18 years. I, I just think we owe him a few words, that's all. Don't know him What's a that? thing. He got a fair trial, didn't he? Before it to be tr fair, you guys have to think about it. Listen, I've lived among them all my life. I mean, they're born liars. Only an ignorant man can believe that. Now, listen. Do you think you were born with a monopoly on the truth? <laughs> oh. <laughs> well said, sir. It seems to me that it's up to the group of us to convince this gentleman that uh, he's wrong and we're right. It's a fair idea. Yeah. It it's hard to put into words. I just think he's guilty. Nobody proved otherwise. Nobody has to prove otherwise. The burden of proof's on the prosecution. Mm -hmm. mm, very good. What I meant was is, well, I, I just think he's guilty. That's not good enough. Yeah, we're not really thinking of our answers here, are we? The old man lived downstairs, and he heard the kid yell out, I'm going to kill you. A second later, he heard a body hit the floor. He claimed he was at the movies during the time of the killing, and yet one hour later, he couldn't remember the names of the films he saw. Interesting. Okay. His window was right opposite hers across the L tracks, and she swore she saw him do it. Through the windows of a passing L train. Through a train? Uh, that's, that's sketchy. You don't believe the boy's story. How come you believe the woman's? She's one of them, too, isn't she? Mm. You're a pretty smart fella, aren't you? No, okay, no, no. gentlemen. <laughs> he's just racist. Yeah, he's got issues. This boy's been hit so many times in his life that violence is practically a normal state of affairs with him. I can't see two slaps provoking him into committing murder. It may have been two too many. Everyone has a breaking point. That's a fair point. Mm -hmm. It's these kids the way they are nowadays. When I was a kid, I used to call my father, sir. Never hear a kid call his father that anymore. Fathers don't seem to think it's important anymore. Some do, yeah. Back in the 50s? Come on. <laughs> hey, some do it now. When he was nine years old, he ran away from a fight. Said, I'm going to make a man out of you if I have to break you in two trying. Jeez. What'd you do? When he was 16, we had a fight. Hit me in the jaw. He's a big kid. I haven't seen him for two years. Good job, Dad. Yeah. All because you wanted him to call you sir. He calls you worse things than that. The kids who crawl out of these places are real trash. I've lived in a slum all my life. Well, I mean, wait, wait a wait, minute. Shh, please, I played in backyards were filled with garbage. Maybe you can still smell it on me. Come on now, there's nothing personal oh, about no, there this. Wasn't. He gets to talk to you. come on. Yep. I began to get the feeling that the defense counsel wasn't conducting a thorough enough cross-examination. He let too many things go by, little things. That... Listen, when these fellows don't ask questions, it's because they know the answer's already... Not necessarily. No, it could just be that he's a bad lawyer. But actually, those two witnesses were the entire case for the prosecution. Supposing they're wrong. Those people sat on the stand under oath. They're only people. People make mistakes. Could they be wrong? Yes. Well, no, I don't think so. No. You know so. 
Oh, come on, nobody can know a thing like that. This isn't an exact science. Then why couldn't they be wrong? Yeah. What about the switch knife they found in the old man's chest? Let's get it in here and look at it. I'd like to see it again, Mr. Foreman. Oh, that's right. They can look at all the evidence they want. Mm -hmm. He went directly to a neighborhood junk shop where he bought one of those uh, switch knives. Switch blade knives. <laughs> Squares. <laughs> the storekeeper who sold it to him said it was the only one of its kind he had ever had in stock. They identified the death weapon in court as that very same knife. He claims that he went to a movie at about 11.30, returning home at 3.10. So he was at the movies for four hours. Sheesh. Long movie. He claims that it fell through a hole in his pocket on the way to the movie. I think it's quite clear that the boy never went to the movies. So where's the pants pocket? Can we see the pants? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's a very unusual knife. I've never seen one like it. Neither had the storekeeper who sold it to the boy. Aren't you asking us to accept a pretty incredible coincidence? It could be the same knife, just somebody else used it. Sure. Oh. Oh, never mind. Where did that come from? <laughs> <laughs> Touche, <but> dickheads. <laughs> I walked through the boy's neighborhood. I bought that in a little pawn shop just two blocks from the boy's house. It cost six dollars. <laughs> the knife is everywhere. <laughs> Jesus. Suppose you tell me what it proves. Maybe there are ten knives like that, so what? Exactly. Yeah. That's all I'm trying to prove. Every hood in town has one. I mean, you're asking us to believe that somebody else did the stabbing with exactly the same kind of knife. The odds are he found it. One. Yeah. It's possible, but not very probable. Unbelievable. You don't have to prove probability. You have to prove possibility. That's like laying down a... Royal flush. I know, right? Over your four of a kind. <laughs> oh, <laughs> screw you. Well, nowadays you never get away with that. You can get a knife in the court. No. <laughs> Somebody saw the kid stab his father. What more do we need? The knife was very important for the district attorneys. He's a 15th assistant or something. What does he know about it? What do you know about it? You can't have your cake and eat it at the same time, guys. Come on. Right. You dismiss things and then use them when they're convenient for you? No. Mm -hmm. Somebody call for another vote. Vote by secret written ballot. There are 11 votes for Gilly. I won't stand alone. We'll... Take in a guilty verdict to the judge right now. See if you convinced anybody. Yeah, make a compelling case with your knife, so. Sure. Guilty. 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 Oops. Ooh. Ooh. Um, <laughs> guilty. <laughs> we just cut that in half. <laughs> All right. Who was it? Come on, I want to know. It's not sure your business. Yeah. I know who it was. Brother, you really are something. Why are you such a bully? Who do you think you are? Down. He's very excitable. Sit down. Excitable? You bet I'm excitable. We're trying to put a guilty man in the chair. You just want to kill somebody. I think he does, too. What made you change your vote? He didn't change his vote. I did. Oh. Oh, fine. Hello. You like me to tell you why? Yes. As a matter of fact, I would. Share your wisdom with us. This gentleman has been standing alone against us. Well, it's not easy to stand alone against the ridicule of others, so we gambled for support, and I gave it to him. Good man. You know what I just realized? Hmm. We haven't learned anybody's name here. No, we haven't. <laughs> it's not relevant to the story. Yeah. It's good storytelling. You don't need their names. Yeah. You're excited back there. I didn't mean to get nasty. Glad you're not one of those lets these emotional appeals influence them. I'm going to beg guilty just to spite you. I don't want this to sound like an apology <laughs> thing but uh you're not all those things i said mm -hmm. not all of them anyway you're <laughs> not all of them yeah. this time <laughs> you know you do good as they're all alike you're always blowing the stacks over some guy in fan can i just take a leak in peace man <laughs> no kid is guilty pal so why don't we stop wasting our time here we're gonna all get sore throats if we keep it I'm up i'm not gonna know? kill somebody just because you're ready to get out of here mm -mm. shouldn't have bought your ball tickets uh in the middle of a court i think he's not guilty huh? supposing you were the one that was on trial well, I'm not used to supposing. I'm just a working man. My boss does a supposing. Nice. Well, you better start. Seriously. Learn to put yourself in other people's shoes. Yeah. Has anybody here any idea how long it would take an elf? <laughs> listening. They're playing tic-tac-toe. Mm -hmm. This isn't a game. Did you see him? These guys are worse than modern day kids. It's it's absolute <laughs> nerve. <laughs> He's actually offended. Yeah, I know. How long it takes an elevator train going at medium speed to pass a given point? Ten seconds is about right. Well, it's moving slow, man. <laughs> I lived in a second floor apartment near the airline once. When the window is open and the train goes by, the noise is almost unbearable. You can hardly hear yourself think. So you can't hail somebody yelling, I'm going to kill you. Yeah. Since the woman saw the killing through the last two cars, we can assume that the body hit the floor just as the train went by. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
therefore the train had been roaring by the old man's window a full 10 seconds before the body hit the floor. The old man would have had to hear the boy make this statement with the yell roaring past his... Yeah, it's not nope. possible. Somebody's timeline's off. Even if he heard something, he still couldn't have identified the voice with the yell roaring by... You're talking about a matter of seconds. Nobody can be that accurate. Well, you're talking about hearsay. Nobody can definitely be that accurate. Yeah. Something I don't think he could have heard it. Yeah, look at all that. He's introduced so much reasonable doubt. Mm -hmm. The case is pretty much over. Yeah. Why should he lie? What's he got to gain? Attention, maybe. You keep coming <laughs> in with this <laughs> I think the old man's enjoying this too much. Yeah, yeah. I looked at him for a very long time. He was dragging his left leg. This is a quiet, insignificant old man who has been nothing all his life. To be quoted just once. Very important to him. See, they're telling tales. Don't tell me you didn't mean it. Anybody says a thing like that the way he said it, they mean it. Well, gee, now, I don't know. I remember I was arguing with the guy I worked next to at the bank a couple weeks ago. He called me an idiot, so I yelled at him. <laughs> Why does he seem so familiar to me? His voice sounds familiar. Yeah. He's a common, ignorant slob. He don't even speak good English. He doesn't even speak good English. Oh, mm. touche. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to change my vote to not guilty. There we go. You what? You heard me. The numbers are piling up. I, I have made some notes here, and notes. I would like to... <laughs> notes. <laughs> he came back home. He was captured by two detectives in the hallway of his house. If he really had killed his father, why would he come back home three hours later? Good question. Yeah. You figured the place would be swarming with cops. So you don't go back to the scene of the crime. Yeah. The boy knew the knife could be identified as the one he had just bought. He had to get it before the police did. But if he knew the knife could be identified, why did he leave it there in the first? Yeah, he should have taken it with him. Yep. I think we can assume the boy ran out in a state of panic after having just killed his father. Well, that makes yep. it a second-degree murder. <laughs> so that's still better than what you're suggesting. Yeah. Look, you voted guilty. What side are you on? I don't believe I have to be loyal to one side or the other. Mm -hmm. I'm simply asking questions. Yeah. We're supposed to be talking about this is our job. Yep. The woman across the street testified she screamed. The boy certainly must have heard the scream. He knew that somebody saw something. You would think, yeah. If he did hear it, he may not have connected it with his own act. Remember, he lived in a neighborhood where screams were fairly commonplace. Oh, well, then that negates everything you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> did or didn't the old man see the kid running out of the house at 1210? He says he did. Says he did? Boy, how do you like that? Now look, witnesses can make mistakes. Sure, when you want them to, they do, or when he wants them hey, to, they okay. do. Wow, calm down. You're taking this very personal. All those voting not guilty, please raise your hands. Come on, I know you want to raise your hand. He's thinking about it. I vote uh, not guilty. Oh, what? oh. Momentum is shifting. Yep. The kid you just decided isn't guilty was seen ramming this into his father. That's not the knife. Don't you remember? Oh. Exactly. <laughs> just proved your own point. Now, what about the old man? Are we supposed to believe that he didn't get up and run to his door and see the kid tearing down the steps? It was midnight. It's probably dark. It's like he what? said he ran. At least I think he did. Where was the bedroom? It was down the hall somewhere. Right. Mr. Foreman, I'd like to see a diagram of the apartment. Come, right. you're the only one in this room who wants to see exhibits all the time. Well, because he's doing his job. Yeah. But I'd like to find out if an old man who drags one foot when he walks, because he had a stroke last year, can get from his bedroom to his front door in 15 seconds. Mm-hmm. How does he know how long 15 seconds is? You can't judge a thing like that. He was very positive about it. He was an old man half the time he was confused. How could he be positive about anything? Oh, see, look exactly. at that. Exactly. I guess, I guess people don't make <laughs> mistakes, huh? <laughs> how could he be sure about anything? Yeah. It's amazing, though, how when he thinks about it, suddenly he realizes his own mistakes. Yes. <laughs> he would have had to walk 12 feet, open the bedroom door, walk 43 feet down and open the front door, all in 15 seconds. Do you think he could have done it? Sure, he could have done it. 43 feet? That's a long way to go. <laughs> yeah. While he's limping, I don't think so. Has anybody got to watch for the second hand? I have. You want me to start snap your <laughs> Okay. <foot> <laughs> he's so eager to help. I know. <laughs> Come on, speed it up. He'd walk twice as fast as that. No, he wouldn't have. That's right. I'm pretty sure 10 seconds have already gone by. Yeah, he's still not even there yet. Stop. Right. What's the time? 41 seconds. 40 Oh, yeah. You all come in here with your hearts bleeding all over the floor. Well, you're not getting through to me. I've had enough. You still haven't made a compelling case. Exactly. You've contradicted yourself at least twice. Yeah. You all know he's guilty. He's got to burn. You're letting him slip through our fingers. You want to see this boy die because you personally want it, not because of the facts. You're a sadist. Oh. <laughs> he's got you there, huh? Yeah. You don't really mean you'll kill me, do you? Ooh. <laughs> oh. That's three times now. <laughs> Can we get a new juror? <laughs> Seriously. I beg pardon. I beg pardon. 
pardon. What are you so polite about? For the same reason you're not. Mm. It's the way I was brought up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he got you on that one. This I have always thought is a remarkable thing about democracy, that, that we are notified by mail to come down to this place to decide on the guilt or innocence of a man we, we have never heard of before. Not used to that in the country you came from. Mm-hmm. Well, that shows a stark difference between people who were born with it and, were, and weren't, huh? Right. Don't you ever sweat? No, I don't. Maybe we should take another vote. I think we ought to have a, an open ballot. See who stands where. It's only going to look worse for y'all. I can vote guilty. Not guilty. Guilty. Yeah, we know. Guilty. That. Not guilty. Not guilty. Guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. Guilty. Of course. No, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> Not guilty. Six. Guilty. So it's half and half. Yep. You've changed two minds in that last argument. Some of you people in here must be out of your minds. Yeah, you. Facts are supposed to determine the case. Don't give me that. I'm sick and tired of facts. You can twist them any way you like. You know what I mean? I mean, you keep shouting at the top of your lungs. I'd like to be a few years younger. <laughs> Have a seat. Yeah, don't, don't stress yourself out. I'd be sticking my head out that window right now just to cool off. Oh, yeah. Oh, come on. Hey, huh? Wait, it's worked this whole time? Must be on the same switch with the lights. <laughs> oh, for God's sake. <laughs> Sweating your asses off. <laughs> I know. <laughs> In the most uncomfortable hour of your lives for no reason. Oh, my God. Where does he come off from? Me? A public avenger? Sadist and everything? No, you're, you're a lunatic. Mm -hmm. You're just trying to bait me. He did an excellent job. Way to keep your emotions in check. Mm hmm Still don't think there's room for reasonable doubt. No, I don't. Maybe you don't fully understand the term reasonable doubt. <laughs> well, how do you like this guy? I'm telling you, they're all alike. They come over here running for a life oh, before they can up. take... I know people like you don't know English. After the boy claimed he'd been at the movie, couldn't remember the names of the movie. Do you think you could remember details after an upsetting experience, I think so. Well, you are a broker. You probably remember these things. <laughs> Under great emotional stress. Under great emotional stress. Where were you last night? I was home. How about the night before that? My wife and I went to the movie. What did you see? The Scarlet Circle. It is a very clever whodunit. What was the second feature? I'll tell you in a minute. Oh, look who's getting fuzzy here. Mm -hmm. Remarkable Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Bainbridge. The remarkable Mrs. Bainbridge. I saw that. It's called The Amazing Mrs. Bainbridge. <laughs> You buy one ticket and you got to watch two movies? Ah, oh, the good old days. And you weren't under an emotional stress, were you? He's sweating now. Oh, yeah, he is. <laughs> <laughs> You're like that guy in Total Recall. Mm -hmm. Put the pill in her mouth. <laughs> there was this whole business about the stab wound and how it was made. The downward angle of it, you know. Now, the boy was five feet, seven inches tall. His father was six, two. Oh. It's a very awkward thing to stab down into the chest of someone who's more than half a foot tall. Especially with a switchblade. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. I'll give you a demonstration. Somebody get up. Uh-uh. Nobody taller than you. Nobody wants you to come and stab him. It's about right. Maybe a little more. Okay, a little more. Well, he's thinking about it. <laughs> I you? know. Yeah. What's it all about? Nobody's hurt, right? Yeah, but you thought about it too long, man. Mm-hmm. Well, this is the way I'd stab a man who was taller than I was. Switchblades came with the neighborhood where I lived. How do you use a switchblade? Well... He'd never use it like this. Yeah, you hold it. Up. Yeah. Right. It's like so that you can switch it open, boom. Mm -hmm. Anyone who's ever used the switch knot wouldn't handle it any other way. That's why they're made to open like that. That's a pretty important fact. Well, I mean, maybe not important, but... But it's all theoretical, though. Yeah. He still could have done it the other way. I'm getting a little tired of this yakety yakking back and forth. It's getting us nowhere. I changed my vote to not guilty. You what? You heard me. I had enough. He sees the writing on the wall and he just wants to go to the ball game. I've sat here and voted guilty with everyone else because there are some baseball tickets burning a hole in your pocket. Damn right he is. Vote not guilty, then do it because you are convinced the man is not guilty and not because you've had enough. Don't you have the guts to do what you think is right? I'm telling you, man, you can't reason with some of these folks. He's not trying, which is terrible. I know. Okay, all those voting not guilty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven... The timid hand raise. Ah. Mm. New one. Clark Kent. Okay. Nine. Oh, and him too. Yep. So three three holdouts. Boy, that really switched, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, it did. I don't understand you people. Look, you know how these people lie? It's born in them. They don't know what the truth is. They get drunk. Oh, they're real big drinkers, all of them. You are so racist. I know he is. 
and even disguising it. Look, sure, there's some good things about them too. Look, I'm the first one to say that. No, you're not. Man, I like what they're doing here right yeah. now. Turn their back on them. Keep your feelings out of it. You ain't worth listening to. They're no good. There's not a one of them who's any good. I was not expecting to see this in a 1950s movie. I know, right? Everybody's taking a stand for the kid like this. Yeah. Like, your argument can't just be because he's a... Be because a that's how these color, people yeah. are, yeah. These people are dangerous. No, people like you are dangerous. Listen, I have. Now sit down and don't open your mouth again. Thank you. Yes. Incredible how some of you, how some of you guys got on this jury. That's who the lawyers look for sometimes. Yeah, they wanted people that were going to say gonna guilty vote, no matter yeah. what, yeah. It's always difficult to keep personal prejudice out of a thing like this. Wherever you run into it, prejudice always obscures the truth. I don't really know what the truth is, but we have a reasonable doubt. And that's something that's very valuable in our system. No jury can declare a man guilty unless it's sure. Well spoken, sir. Mm -hmm. You've made some excellent points, but I still believe the boy is guilty of murder. The evidence given by the woman across the street, her bed was next to the window, and she could look out and see directly into the boy's room. She got a good look at the boy in the act of stabbing his father. Give him the two seconds it took him to stab him? Exactly. The broker's the only one actually making an argument. Yeah. Frankly, I don't see how you can vote for acquittal. That's so easy to arrange all the evidence in order. And... You can throw out all the other evidence. The woman saw him do it. Through a train. Yes. All right, I'm changing my vote. It's guilty. Anybody else? The vote is eight to four. Let's go over it again. We've been... <laughs> the boy in the gray flannel suit here is bouncing backwards and forwards like a tennis ball. Yeah, because he got, he's got no spine. That's yeah, what that's the thing. Someone before mentioned seven o'clock. It's a point at which we might begin to discuss the question of whether we're a hung jury or not. I was wondering why you rub your nose like that. Oh, I was rubbing it because it bothers me a little. Why does it bother you a little? Is it because of your eyeglasses? It is. Your eyeglasses made those two deep impressions in the size of your nose. I hadn't noticed that. Before. Yeah, I got them too. Mm -hmm. Right there. The woman who testified that she saw the killing had those same marks on the sides of her nose. Mm -hmm. She probably wasn't wearing her glasses. Uh -huh. You know it. It's the My Cousin Vinny defense. No. She kept rubbing them in court. It's a hell of a thing She's to right. remember. <laughs> yeah, it is. This woman was about, uh, about 45 years old. She's making a tremendous effort to look 35. <laughs> <laughs> Heavy makeup. No glasses. Well, what point are you making here? She had dyed hair, marks on her nose. Well, what does that mean? Could those marks be made by anything other than eyeglasses? <laughs> I mean, she has glasses and she probably wasn't wearing them. No, they couldn't. Nope. <laughs> Strange, but I didn't think about it before. What about the lawyer? Why didn't he say something? There are 12 people in here concentrating on this case. 11 of us didn't think of it either. Mm hmm Okay. She had marks on her nose. But when she saw this kid killing his father, she was in the house alone. In bed. Not wearing her damn glasses in bed. Do you wear glasses when you go to bed? No, I don't. Nobody does. No one wears eyeglasses to bed. Hell no, I take them off for naps. <laughs> yeah. She herself testified the killing took place just as she looked out. She couldn't have had time to put them on there. Right. Maybe she honestly thought she saw the boy kill his father. I say she only saw a blur. How do you know what she saw? We don't. It's a... It's a... Reasonable doubt. She had to be able to identify a person 60 feet away at night without mm -hmm. glasses. Through a train. I can't do that. You can't send someone off to die on evidence like that. Don't you think the woman might have made a mistake? No, it's not possible. Why is it not possible? Is it possible? Not guilty. Yeah, grow, grow a spine for God's sake. <laughs> you think he's guilty? Oh. Well, he changed his mind. Yeah. He, 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 he just racist. doesn't want any smoke anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm convinced. Not guilty. All right. What's the matter with you? I have a reasonable doubt now. Well, what about all the other evidence? You what? said we could throw out all the other evidence. Yeah, there's no more evidence. They discredited all of it. You're alone. I don't care whether I'm alone or not. It's my right. You just want to be a jackass. What about the kid's right? What do you want? I say he's guilty. I want to hear your arguments. The old man saw him right there on the stairs. What's the difference how many seconds it was? Who hurt you, man? <laughs> no kidding. And what about this business of the L and the movies? I bet you five thousand dollars I'd remember the movies I saw. I actually believe him. He would remember the movies he saw based on his character from The Exorcist. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, rotten kid, you work your life out.
You should be declared unfit just for this whole act. Not guilty. Not guilty. Thank God for that. Jeez. Do you know how lucky that kid is right now? Mm-hmm. They're ready to kill him. Got to give it to the architect there. Did he, a hell of a job. He got the job done. Well, him, the old man helped a lot, too. The old man did a great job. But his memory was, and his some, wisdom were great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Those little fine details. Mm-hmm. Way to recall. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm not sure I could remember it all. <laughs> Look at that, man. No hard feelings, man. Let's just go do our job and go home. At the end of the day, everybody's civil. Go home and live your life. I mean, it's not like that. Kid's gonna show up at your doorstep, say thank you, and then stab you with a switch. Oh blade. god, that's the next trial. <laughs> Look at all the cigarette butts, Jesus. <laughs> Those guys were smoking it up in there. Yeah. Well, I just left the knife. <laughs> oh, it's not mine. I found that on the side of the road. <laughs> What's your name? Davis. My name's McArdle. McArdle? Okay. Well, so long. <laughs> That's the first time they introduce themselves at the end of the show. Well, I guess she, get, I guess she can all go to the ball game now. Player got rained out. Yeah, then what does he care? <laughs> He's just taking his time. Yeah. He's so broken. <laughs> Should put a question mark there at the. Uh, the uh, <laughs> maybe the end. Yeah. Good movie. Mm hmm. They don't make him like that anymore. Nope. What did the old man say his name was? McCardle? Something like that. Yeah. Sheesh. They don't name them like that anymore either. I know. <laughs> it took a whole movie just to find that. I wouldn't be introducing myself either. Okay. <laughs> you can just call me Mac. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> All right, there, Mac. Is that short for McCready? No, McCardle. Okay. <laughs> Daniel, would you? How would you make of this movie? I liked it. It's a very well acted film. Yes. It's very much a, one of those movies where you know less is more because, like we said, they never really introduced themselves. At the same time, it's not relevant. Like the, the entire movie took place inside this little jury room. Mm -hmm. You know, you didn't have to see anything extra. You didn't have to hear anything extra. You didn't have all these complicated backstories for everybody that was in the room. It was all about the case. It's very simple. It's very easy to follow. And I liked, too, the way that it played out because, in a way, you felt like you were following the detectives going through the case, listening to them bring up all these details and thinking of all, thinking outside the box to figure out, okay, this is what actually happened. And that was one of the things I enjoyed about the movie was the, uh, as as their arguments went on, their attention to detail started to come a little bit more to fruition. Mm -hmm. Because early on, 11 people voted guilty. And then the more they started to think about it, the more they started to realize not everything's really adding up here. Right. Because it's like one detail makes me think of another detail. And then that makes me think of another until finally we find nobody really has a solid ground to stand on. And I really enjoyed that. I also liked how people were swayed, with the exception of one or two people, everybody was swayed with evidence and logic. Yeah, it's a know, big deal. That's one of the benefits to having this, this whole trial by jury system is you have people from different backgrounds in there, people who think differently from one another. It's harder for somebody to say, well, this is what I think, and everyone just goes along with it. People right. are going to have their own opinions. You know, and for better and worse, we did see some of them who really up till the end were totally convinced the kid was guilty, even though they couldn't make the smallest argument as to why. Mm -hmm. But then you had other people who were in there too, like, look, I'm looking at the details and I can punch holes in all these different things in the case, you know, and eventually people pick up on that, like, oh yeah, you're right, you know, that's a, that's a good argument. And so eventually it just kind of worked out for the kid. Yeah, definitely. At, at first I was feeling bad for him because he had a he had a jury panel there that was pretty well handpicked and ready to dismiss his life and move on. Mm -hmm. And it made me feel bad because he... Clearly, because they brought up the fact that he was born in the slums, he grew up there. He, Davis, who we learned his name there at the end, yeah, made the point that you know he'd been slapped on the head once a day for his whole entire life until he was 18 years old here. I say the kid had every had every reason to hate his father and to want his death. Well, there's that, but it's also the fact that he grew up poor, and yeah. he had two dimes to rub together. He couldn't afford a decent lawyer that would help pick a good jury mm -hmm. and really make a case for him. So he got what he got. And what really saved him here was a jury that had a couple of decent people on it that wanted to look at all the evidence. Honestly, David should have been his lawyer. He did pretty good. It probably could have been his lawyer there, right? Or the old man, for that matter. I mean, they were in that room for an hour and a half, and he came up with some really good points. You know, give him a, a couple of months to prepare a case. He probably could have pulled it out. Well, I would have taken McArdle. Okay. <laughs> taken McArdle? Yeah. 
He'd have had that woman up on the stand said, I noticed you rub your nose like that a lot. <laughs> It'd be like watching Matt Lock. Well, forgive me for saying so, but to, but you know, I bet you prettied yourself up here so that you wouldn't have to wear your glasses. <laughs> Jeez. And I'm like, God, make her cry. When <laughs> She'll get sympathy votes out of the jury. <laughs> right. It's like, jury, you will disregard everything he brought up. It's like, now wait a minute. That's important. She didn't have her glasses on. Oh, she wears man. glasses, I tell you. <laughs> oh, that would suck for that kid. Yeah, right. You're like the acting, too. There's a lot of characters in here that we recognize. You pointed out the guy from The Exorcist who was the yeah. detective. Lee J. Cobb there. Yeah. yeah. Then you had Ed Begley there who was the, the baseball guy. Mm -hmm. And you had uh, Henry Fonda. It was interesting because, you know... That was Davis, right? Yeah, that was Davis. Yeah, because I remember him from On Golden Pond, but he looked much older in that one. Yeah. And what's funny, too, is seeing them in this kind of role, because, you know, I think of Ed Begley, I think of his role from, like, Dirty Work as, like, the father. I still need to see that. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because he's, he's just so crazy in that film. And then Henry Fonda, I always think of Once Upon a Time in the West, where he's a bad guy. Ooh. He's still kind of the same quiet thinking type of character, but he's just an evil person who does, like, really bad things. <laughs> Was a stark difference here, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Damn. They all had different roles in this case. Mm -hmm. You know who I liked? I don't know who he is, but I like the uh, the guy playing the, the broker there. Mm -hmm. I liked that he was just, he was a robot in that room. And yeah, he, he was. was not going to be swayed off of his evidence path for anything. And it took McArdle there, Mac, to change his vote there. But at the very least, he kept his, he kept his feelings out of it. But at least he, though, was trying to make his point. You know, he said, you know, look... Here's the evidence, you know, here's why I think this is it. The other ones were... Like, he was doing it by bullet points, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He had some logic to the way he was doing it. The yeah. others were either just being you know, discriminatory or they just didn't care. You know, they just wanted to be done with the whole kit, with the whole thing. Oh, I know. And then there's uh, Mr. Cough Drops over there. Mm -hmm. We well, just went in there. He was ready to rule anybody with a different complexion guilty. <laughs> yeah. It's like, man, if you were on that jury, it's like you had to be guilty. Look at look at how you look, you know? Yeah, it's, it's kind of suck to have somebody like that on your jury, knowing that their your life is in the hands of somebody like that. I would bet money that the uh, prosecutor put him on the tr put him on that jury for that reason. Oh, I'm pretty sure they did. Yeah, it's like, okay, here'll do. <laughs> It's kind of like, you brought up my cousin Vinny. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you remember when they're prick picking a jury too in there? And the woman said, I think it should be up to the victim's families. And they're like, well, let's say this person did that. And she said, fry him. <laughs> Jesus. And the guy's like, she'll do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's like, okay, so you know that she's got a personal vendetta out. And you put her on this trial anyway. Yeah, it's kind of the bad things about the jury system too. Is like, you get anybody in there. Yeah. And you would think... Because I remember going to a, a jury summons myself. Mm -hmm. I did get picked for... You got jury duty, which you actually had to duty. go on the jury. Yeah, so they, they brought me in and they and they dismissed me. Mm -hmm. You know, after picking who was going to sit on the panel there. But I remember at both sides, the prosecutor and the defense, gave cases as to why this is important for us. Mm -hmm. And they kept all the feelings out of it. They wanted people that knew exactly the, the complexities of the case on this thing. Yeah. so that they could make informed decisions and they kept feelings out of it so they did a good job on that one so i would hope that and i know a lot of this is for hollywood but i would hope that that doesn't really happen but the truth is i don't know i say i've had jury duty a couple of times too and you know it is kind of the thing where you go in there and you have to sit in the room for you know maybe several hours on end with the lawyers as they kind of explain the basic details of the case and try to weed out anybody who might you know have a bias one way or the other yeah you know they try but at the same time there's certain things that are going to be kind of hard to you know get out of people's heads. You know, I don't know what it was back then, but I know nowadays, you know, like they bring in a lot of people. So you, you might try really hard to get out all the bias, but with that many people in there, it's going to be really hard to say you know, who thinks what. Yeah, and a lot of it comes down to how you were raised or how you were born. You yeah. Know, what family you were born into and what beliefs they brought you up to to go by. And even the the one gentleman on the on the jury that was that was clearly an immigrant mm -hmm. told Mr. Cough Drops there that, you know, you and I were both raised to be this way. Right. It's like, I was raised to have manners, you were raised to have none, kind mm -hmm. of thing. So, mm -hmm. yeah, makes your point there, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, that's exactly right, though. You know, you're you're a product of your environment, just like anybody else is. If you've been raised your whole life to think that, you know, people are inherently selfish and, and greedy and whatnot, you're going to go in there with the perspective of, yeah, this guy's probably guilty because that's, that's probably what I would be. Yeah. You know, but... Sadly, that's the wrong way of looking at things. Yeah, certainly. But in the end, I mean, uh, you know, logic prevailed here. Logic so, prevailed. And I want to know who the uh, who the really eager to help guy was because he reminded me of Radar. <laughs> he had so the much. same voice too. 
Yeah. I don't think that was him, but I, yeah, I'm not entirely sure. We're going to look him up real fast. Okay. Here. John Fielder. Fiedler. Fiedler. Well, there's an older face. Don't tell me those are your movies. Oh, is he Piglet? Wait, was he? <laughs> is that why his voice sounds familiar? Oh, my God. I think, yeah. <laughs> Who the else? The voice of Piglet from Winnie the Pooh. Who else could that be? You got... Winnie the Pooh, 12 Angry Men, Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> That's his movie. I, That's I, a I, heck of a line. <laughs> and just right there in the middle, 12 Angry Men. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. Well, yeah. there's, a, there's a history lesson for everybody. Yeah, that guy is freaking Piglet's voice. Okay. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, God. I knew it sounded familiar. Now I know why. <laughs> Of all the ways for that to sound familiar. Uh, Sitting there going, why do you sound familiar? Today I learned something new, fam. I learned what Piglet looks like in real life. Oh, God. And he is not an angry man. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, that movie title was deceptive. They weren't all angry, just, like just three one. of them. Yeah, one of them was not angry. Yeah, <laughs> but I don't know. Maybe everybody else was so angry is making everybody else look mad, too. Yeah, so. maybe. I think the heat and the fact that people were, were convinced this thing was going to be over in five minutes and it wasn't. No. And they all kept screaming for a hum jury, too. I'm like, dude, you've been in here an hour. Yeah, this like, is... Like, this movie's only an hour and a half. You've been <laughs> arguing for an hour, and you're, and you're already convinced we can't get somewhere? I mean, really, that's just dereliction of duty on their part. Like, you don't want to go through the whole process. You just want it to be over. Exactly. That's going to piss the judge right off. Oh, yeah, you know it will. So he looked like he was tired of that whole trial to begin with. You tell him that. Oh, sure. You're going to be like, come on, guys. Yeah, take as long as you need. First thing I would have asked Bale for is like, can you get us a room where the AC works? <laughs> and it turned out the fan worked the whole time. They yeah. never turned the switch on. Idiots. I'm like, should you be looking at evidence? Turn the lights on. <laughs> oh god. All right, fam. I think we're I think we're both decided here. Now, I think there's a plenty of reasonable doubt there. Yes, we have enough evidence to go ahead and end this discussion right now, guys. And leave it up to you in the comments section. <laughs> By all means, get in there. Tell us what you think about this movie. Tell us what tell us what you think about the uh, actors and their dialogue, because the dialogue was something else too. Oh, so, incredible! Talk to us out there, guys. We miss you. But until next time, if you're brand new with us, I hope you'll consider subscribing and help us grow. If you enjoyed the video leave a like and hit the bells to receive notifications for all new videos and should you feel compelled give us a piece of your mind in the comments guys while you're at it take a look at us on our socials we're on instagram and tiktok see what we're up to over there guys but until next time this is cocktail flicks i'm joe i'm bam and we'll catch you on the flip side cheers to you fam cheers to you dan cheers to you joe later you guys